On today's show, Slightly Bias returns, and now he's learned finally about the Mavericks free agency moves. How do they move the needle for the Mavericks? Do they move the needle for the Mavericks? Talk about all that and more today's Locked on Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked on Mavericks podcast. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. You are Locked on Mavs. Great, Rusty. Your daily Dallas Mavericks podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show, making Lockdown Maps your first listen today. The best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform. Leave a five-star review there. Keep, take us with you. Apple, Spotify, all that. Joining me, back from Europe, Slightly Biased from the great Slightly Biased YouTube channel. What you got for me, Slightly? Well, I'm sure some of you saw Nick and I just completed a stream. <laughs> Nick came over. We're, we're at the Sunny Bias headquarters right now. Uh, my voice is gone. It's just... <laughs> but uh, he just filled me in on everything I missed. And wow, I'm still trying to process it. The Mavericks were one of the busiest teams yet again in the offseason and free agency in a trade or signing window. Like they usually are at the trade deadline as well. So... Uh, Wow, a lot to process. A lot to process. So he did. He had. He literally did not know any of the free agency moves. He knew the no. draft, but he left after yeah. the draft and did not know free agency moves. So we did a two-hour-plus stream on his channel, Slightly Biased. You can go watch that. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I convinced him that the Mavs got Bogdanovich. Bogdan I, Bogdanovich. And he was, I, yeah. he, he was <laughs> I thought, yeah, okay, sure. Why not? And I also convinced him the biggest lie that I told right off the bat. So right just go the watch bat. the first five minutes. That Paul George went to the Thunder. And I believed it. And he believed it fully. And he (laughs) he carried the bid on for longer than I would have assumed for a lot. I I let him analyze it. I let him, like, start talking through what it means for the Thunder and other teams. And I'm like, well, they must. (laughs) Wow. Like, J-Dub. Like, they must not have believed in J-Dub. And we're all talking about this. He goes, I lied. I was like, oh. (laughs) Okay. I did the Darth Vader. I lied. (laughs) But uh, it was a great stream, though. Thanks for coming, Nick. Now you know know about... Clay Thompson, about Najee Marshall, and Quentin Grimes. So we can talk about those deals. We'll talk about how they affect the Mavericks and how they uh, change the Mavericks. And if they're upgrades at all, and we'll get your opinion on it. Now, your your slightly biased opinion right. about it. Let's start with Clay Thompson. That was the big one, right? Clay Thompson mm-hmm. comes over from the Warriors. And now, how do you view the Clay Thompson move? Uh, well, if we're looking at it as like a one to one Tim Hardaway Jr. Clay Thompson maneuver, obviously a clear upgrade. Uh, I've been a critic of Clay Thompson at times. You know, obviously, he's nowhere near the player he once was. Just age and injuries sort of catching up to him. He's not the all-NBA defender that he once was at, at the peak of his career. Still a great shooter. Or still a great shooter. And not really the off-the-dribble threat that he never yeah. was a great one, but the decision-making, it feels like, has really taken a turn downhill at times where there's just been shots that he takes. You're like, what possessed you to take that <laughs> shot right there? Um, the Warriors fans complained about all last year. Right, but you mentioned this on my stream. He's still an 18 points per game guy last year. Still shot incredibly well from three-point land. On a down year. Uh, and you got him for less than $20 million a year, like a, a, what I think is a pretty wow. reasonable and fair contract. And you did give up Josh Green in the process, and I guess we'll talk about that here in a bit. But yeah. I, I like it, what it presents for the Mavericks just in terms of their floor spacing and having a real, legit three-point, I mean, lethal three-point shooting threat next to Luka and Kyrie, the gravity that that's going to have. And guess what, Clay? I, I was going to say Clay's never had that. Well, he played next to Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. So he has had that. But, uh, you know, but Steph, he's played off of superstars, which he, is like yep, he's a, played off a good of thing for a guy like that. That You go, oh, is Clay going to like the role that he's in? I, he just oh, yeah. He's played with Curry and Durant. So he's, he knows how to be a third guy. Sometimes. He just signed for $15 million. Yeah. Like that's, he knows what he's signing up for. Yeah. Like he just does. So uh, it's a, it shocks me that he's gone. Like that's, that's the thing that I think is more than him being on the Mavericks. Like him not being on the Warriors is just wild. weird. It's it would have felt weird no matter who it is. And it's on the Mavs. It's just crazy. And you, you were telling me all this stuff about the Lakers. Like, it's starting to feel to me like the Mavericks are a real destination now for a lot of these. It feels not fair to call Clay a role player, but that is what he is at this point in his career, for sure, is a role player. And even at the peak of his career, he a was star just role player, an all-star, like? superstar level role player. But uh, these guys just want to come here. They get good opportunities. They know, despite what all of the nonsense is. He also talked about he wanted to win another title. And the Mavs yeah. gave him a better chance than the Lakers did. Well, they just went to the finals. Like, that shouldn't be that surprising. I know, it. I know, but it still has not, like, sunk yeah. in, I think, at least for me yeah. and for probably other Mavs fans, too, is like, okay, this team actually just went to the finals. Yeah. And we have to think about them as a contender because it wasn't until 
the the Mavs won the Thunder series where I went, oh, this team is a title contender. Like yeah. they, they are going to be one of the final four teams that can actually go there because in 2022, it never really truly felt like yeah. they were going to get there. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, those, it's just wild. It is crazy to me that they're like this because it, it's teams, people could have looked at that and just been like, oh, well, the Mavs are just one of these teams that make it there. But yeah, I mean, for Clay, I'd have to imagine, especially at this price, a lot of contending teams were interested in that. Any teams that had access to a mid-level or teams that could have done a sign-and-trade similar to this. Lakers uh, offered more. Lakers offered more. I'm sure that Sixers probably made contact at some point. I'm sure a team like Orlando probably made contact at some point. Um, so, you know, it's really interesting. I, I like the fit offensively. Defensively, there's yeah. questions that need to be answered. Yeah, let's go defense. The, the questions on defense. A lot of people have been talking about, oh, the point of attack defense. You go from Derek Jones Jr., who we'll talk about losing him, to now Clay Thompson. The downgraded defense. To be honest, I don't feel like that downgraded defense is that huge. Because Derek Jones Jr., for as much as we loved him and he brought great stuff, he played 20 minutes a game, yeah. even to end the season last year. His role in the playoffs and the playoff question of, of Clay Thompson's point of attack defense will be in question. But for regular season-wise, like they have enough other options – and yeah. the Mavs defense can work well enough that I think it can work. But defensively for you, is is that a huge concern now? Well, it, it makes me wonder if they view the way that they ended the season and the postseason as not necessarily sustainable for 82 games mm -hmm. and that it might make more sense to get more shooting and offense next to Luke and Kyrie. So yeah. they're asked to do less and so that we can maybe manage to survive a full 82 game season and then get to the playoffs and you can turn it on by doing a bunch of different lineup changes and stuff like that. And also at 50 million a year, it's not like, it's not like Clay's destined to be a starter, like set in stone. Like that could be an off the bench thing at some point. Uh, I don't know. I didn't, I haven't watched a press conference yet, so I don't know if that was brought up or I don't know if he talked about sacrifice. He said, I, I you know, I'm willing to come in and sacrifice. We don't know exactly what that means, but even if, you know, I think he's not going to close games sometimes. Yeah. And if Clay is going to be okay with that and that's the sacrifice, if he starts, and maybe the Mavs starting lineup ends up being the worst, but I can't imagine it being one of the worst in basketball. You know, no. like if that that's what it would take for them to make a, a change there. And I mean, I'm just uh, offensively, it's going to be really good. Yeah. Like that, if, assuming Clay's the starting three, that's going to be a really good lineup offensively. And assuming PJ is the starting four, what are you most, what are you most excited about, Clay and start Clay offensively in the starting lineup? I mean, the, the corner three immediately, the gravity of the floor it completely changes. That is a guy that you cannot leave. That's a guy who also. This is something the Mavericks haven't really had or done is this movement shooter who we can run them off screens. We can do off ball actions. And that creates so much havoc for defenses where let's say the Mavs are, you know, Clay's on the weak side of the floor with somebody else. They can run like an off ball screen. And now all of a sudden you have two defenders on the other end of the court that have to be fully locked into what they're doing over there because they can't let Clay off a screen uh, completely uncontested. So now that, that shifts the dynamic of the floor on the other end of the, of, of the court so Luke and Kyrie can work with a big or whoever and go to work in the pick and roll. So... Uh, it's definitely pretty game changing. I would say Luca's not played with a shooter like this. No, uh, unless you want to count Kyrie, but Seth Curry. Well, yeah, you Seth know, Curry's like the, I mean that that. That's well, I mean, talking. isn't he the best three point shooter all time percentage wise? Is yeah. that still the thing? Well, there you go. So I guess he has. But just in terms, people of, will say Kyrie, but different different type of shooter, different type of shooter, and different type of player. Like we're talking about your third, fourth guy having this spacing threat, and is, he's he's big too. He's six yeah. seven. Yeah, he, he plugs in five at the three. Like, the, there's going to be defensive questions, but, um, you know, you now have some flexibility. We'll talk about two new guys as well here in yeah. a bit that that can offer you that flexibility. Uh, so I think it's interesting. It's fun. It's exciting. That's a, that's a thing, too. Like, it's Clay Thompson, this well-known NBA player who nobody would ever th think left the Warriors, leaves the Warriors, and goes to the Mavericks. Um, it is fun. And, you know, it's not like a $30 million contract. Yeah, that, so. that to me, when it first initially got announced, I was like, ah, I don't, if they're going to give up a lot, if they're going to, you know, have to give up multiple guys, they're going to have to give a big contract, then, then I'm not really into it. But yeah. if it's you just give up Josh Green, you actually get a second round pick back, so it's one-to-one -one there, and then the contract is not as big, then all of a sudden, I'm completely down for it. Coming up, let's talk about what, what Clay Thompson means to Mavs fans, let's talk about the starting lineup a little bit, and of course, Najee Marshall and Quinn Grimes. We'll slightly think about those guys. Let's talk about that coming up. You don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance for superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style. eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for, and with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, you know that part is going to fit your car every, every time, the first time, or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not... Cash. Cash. That's great. 
With all the parts you need, the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins like the maps are going to get next season. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guarantee fit, only available to U.S. customers. We might be the Splash Bros, but you a Splash Go. Oh. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate you and every one of you for checking out the show. Five-day-a-week Dallas Mavericks show all throughout the offseason and all that. Slightly biased is back, back from vacation. We're excited to excited. have him back in the fold. He did not know any of the moves, and so he's reacting to them for the first time today, which I just find hilarious. That stream was so great. Clay Thompson to the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. As, a, as a Mavs fan, the, the, the Mavs have now become some kind of destination like you talked about. What does that mean for a Mavs fan? Because you think about this is one of my big things when this move first happened. The narrative shifts yeah. that are happening for the Mavericks. Guys don't want to play with Luka. Yep. The Mavs can't get free agents. It was nine years ago, like two days ago, that the Mavs couldn't get DeAndre Jordan to sign. Nine to sign years? Their deal. Nine years. Oh, my God. That Cuban was driving around <laughs> trying, trying <laughs> to get his deal. That the chair on the, you know, on the door and all that. Oh, my God. They couldn't get years. that. That guys didn't want to play. That, that Kyrie Irving was a, a cancer or, or whatever. Yeah. Kyrie Irving was the one they recruited Clay Thompson to, to come join them. All oh, the, I didn't know that. All those things. Kyrie Irving was, was big in the Clay Thompson okay, recruiting. Because they're both, they're both on Anta. Okay. Choose, and then, you know, they played together on Team USA and all that kind of stuff. They talked about it. What does that mean as a Mavs fan to now those narratives start to change for them? Well, yeah, it feels good. I mean, one, it shows that you are a contending team. Like, and that's how teams, players around the league view you as well. It's one thing if you, as a fan, try to convince yourself that you're a contending team. Yeah, right. That that what, what says that you are are players who are like, I want to go play with the Mavericks. I want to leave my team that I've been a part of for the last decade plus, and I want to go to the Dallas Mavericks. I want to play next to Luka. I want to play next to Kyrie Irving. And yeah, the Luka narrative that was always nonsense and that never made sense ever, that guys don't want to play with him or he's hard to play with. Now, all of a sudden, you have a bunch of role guys who are like, I want to play for Dallas. I just saw Derek Jones Jr., who we'll talk about leaving here in a bit. That one (sighs) broke my heart a little bit. But uh, I just saw him sign a a vet minimum and then... Well, I guess he didn't get as big of a bag as I was fully expecting. 30 mil. 30 mil, yeah. I, he, doubled his, he doubled his career salary. Doubled his career salary uh, off of playing alongside a guy like Luca. Uh, we've seen guys revive their careers here. Like, it's not, it's not a secret. Some guys don't work out, and that's just the way that it goes. But, you know, uh, it feels good as a fan. It really does. Because we've wanted this for a long time. I was like, why does no one want to play next to Dirk? Yeah. Can, why does no one want to play next to Luca? And now it's like Mike Conley, Hassan Whiteside. Oh, I remember the Hassan <laughs> Jay Whiteside. Jay Crowder. No. Who are the other free agents? Danny said. Green. <laughs> that was the worst. That was the worst and saddest one, I think, of all of them. It's just I just remember us just listening to that podcast over and over again. The green, that podcast the better still exist. <laughs> for the other guy, for the whoever his sidekick was, that was the some white guy. That's how no. every NBA podcast is. Some random he, five he, seven he, white guy. I would like to be the random five seven. You're white too tall, guy. dude. Oh, You're too tall. Damn it. And too good at uh, your job. <laughs> Dudley, if you ever stop coaching, <laughs> I'm telling you, I will be your podcast host. You and me will take over the world. JJ Reddick just left. There's a void. There's a void. Well, with Clay Thompson. So now, now the starting lineup. Yeah. Luca, Kyrie, Clay, PJ, Lively or Gafford? We'll go with Lively for now. Lively. We'll go with Lively. How are you feeling about that starting lineup now? It's interesting. I mean, it, it is very, very interesting. Assuming that Clay is around 40% from three. That spacing right there. PJ will shoot better from three, I'm convinced, or just over the course of the regular season than he did last year. Shot really well in the playoffs. Uh, And Derek Lively gives you this otherworldly vertical spacing threat and and lobs. And then who knows what he's going to add to his bag offensively. I mean, we really don't know. With how much he improved over the course of the season and stuff and how how shocking he was and how good he was that early, I I don't know. I don't know. You could tell me Derek Lively could do a million things next year, and I'd believe you. So, uh that's a good starting five, man. I love that starting five. That's a good like, I think that works five. really well. Defensively, yeah, you may take a little a little down tick, but what Lively can bring, and there was a report. There was a report. You're not ready for this one. Oh, no. There is a report the Mavs believe, from Mark Stein, the, the Mavs believe Derek Lively could turn into a Kevin Garnett level defender for them. Jared Dudley said that. <laughs> Jared Dudley has been gassing up all the Nick summer league. All the Jared Dudley summer league quotes. Jared, He's like, Melvin Jared, and Jitsa, point forward. I'm like, okay. Jared Dudley. Pascal, uh, Omax looking like Pascal Siakam out there. Hey, sign me up for that one. <laughs> he said he was Euroing. Yeah, it's a little step. That's all you have to do? I can pull off a Euro in a right game. <laughs> I have yet to see that. Well, it might not look pretty or be, <laughs> be successful, but I can do one. Najee Marshall, the knife, signs with the Mavericks now. He basically one-to-one replaces Derek Jones Jr. The contract the Mavs offered Derek Jones Jr. that he t- turned down. Najee Marshall gets it. Najee Marshall now on the Mavs. Surprising to me. I thought he'd be a full mid-level guy, but I, I guess I didn't anticipate. There's the, no mid-level yes, guys. <laughs> there's, I don't think there was a guy who got a full mid-level from what I was hearing. 
Um, from me. Yes, from, from <laughs> Nick. So if I'm wrong, it's his fault. I was the one uh, keep in mind, that. I haven't heard anything before today. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, this one's crazy to me. I guess now that this happened, I do remember there were reports before free agency that his name was tied to If they lose the Derek Jones yes. Jr., they would get Najee. Yeah, so I, it makes go. sense in that regard. Yeah, it, uh, a versatile role guy who I thought made sense for a lot of contending teams. I think in my prediction video, I said he would go to the Kings on the, on the full level. But yeah, he makes a ton of sense here as a Derek Jones Jr. replacement and a guy who offers more versatility than Derek Jones Jr. Yeah. He's not the point of attack defender Derek Jones Jr. is, but he's not, you know, he's not terrible at that. Yeah. He's a good defender, a hard nosed defender, plays hard, and just offensively has a little bit more to his bag than I think people would expect. Not to say that he's going to drop 20 points a game or anything like that, but he'll score. He can do stuff off the dribble. He's a pretty interesting playmaker. And can shoot threes, so I've seen him throw some wild passes. Yeah, I mean he's he's a decent, he's a like legitimately decent playmaker. So that just adds a we we've seen we saw it against the Celtics. Like if you just have a bunch of guys on the court who can attack the rim, kick out, shoot threes, like it's a nightmare. It's at, like no defensive scheme can fit, can solve that. If you're at home, you've listened to the episodes of Lockdown Maps this week. Take a drink. He's a dirty work wing. I said dirty work wing like 18 times. Okay, like, yeah, he is. He's a dirty work wing, and the Mavs needed to learn that lesson to keep those guys, and now they have Najee Marshall that comes in one-to-one replacement for Derrick yeah. Jones, does different things, but he's going to do the hustle plays. He's going to come in and be – he got ejected for, you know, last season for fighting with Jimmy Butler. Like he – you know, uh, I think Antonio Daniels, who's the well color analyst guy for the, um, for the Pelicans, said – you'll never have to worry about Luca being protected ever again Ooh, <laughs> with, like with Najee Marshall because he is going to come in and he is going to protect guys and all, and all that stuff. I don't love that. I, we've heard that for a lot of guys. So it doesn't mean much to me. <laughs> I want on the court dual, stuff. What, remember the, the Josh, Josh Richardson and James Johnson? And James and, Johnson? I know. Dogs, the dogs, are the dogs are on the way. Dogs are on their way. I just want good players. Like that, I, that, that became like the call sign for this guy might not be good. But guys, if there's a fight on the court... <laughs> Uh, but Najee's better than that. But yeah, Najee, Najee coming in, I think, I think does a lot. Let's talk about uh, Quinn Grimes. So you, we, we sort of mentioned that, but now like in full, all three of those guys together. I, I said in my break on the stream that we did a Quentin Grimes Tim Hardaway Jr. episode, didn't we? I can't remember. I, I, I can't remember, remember if that's just my imagination. But uh, it's interesting. I don't know how I feel about Quentin Grimes as a player. Um, I don't know if it's just because Mavs fans have spent the last however many days, weeks, talking themselves into it. I don't know if I can get there with him being better than Josh Green right now. But that is also because he uh, just had such a weird wonky season last year for a lot of different reasons, was weird, had a weird thing in the Knicks rotation, then got traded to the Pistons, then got hurt, played six games for them. So um, point of attack defense at his peak a couple years ago for the Knicks was really good. Was, was good. Uh, I said this a couple years ago. Did. It was two years ago. It was two years not ago, last yeah. season, but the year before that. Yeah, uh, I, we did do an episode on this because I remember saying, "Yes, we did." This was a guy who was last off season an untouchable player in Donovan Mitchell trade. Yeah, uh, rumors like that was a thing. Or I guess that was two off seasons ago. That was a thing that actually happened. So, you know, I see the vision there. I'm not penciling him in as anything more than the eighth or ninth guy currently. And if he's more than that, great. If he's not, it doesn't make or break your team in any real significant way because. He's replacing Josh Green, a guy who, in the most important moments of the season, was in and out of the rotation pretty much or getting low minutes. And one of the things to me that I said the other day is you're getting guys that are hungry, that have something to prove now, right? Like, yeah. you're not, you don't have guys that are just going to sit and, and rest and be like, all right, I know my role in this team. I can't get higher. I can't get lower. So I'm just going to do what I do. So you've got Clay Thompson who's got something to prove. Yeah. With the Warriors from last season, his, his season was very disappointing. He wants to prove some stuff, wants to win another t- championship, and knows how to get there. Najee Marshall just got a deal and wants to prove that he he's probably going to start off the bench and he's yep. probably going to want to prove more in the NBA. He's undrafted guy, so he's always got something to prove. Mavs mm-hmm. love those guys. And then Quinn Grimes, who got benched for Dante Givincenzo last year for the Knicks and then got traded for Bogdanovich and then was on the Pistons and is now looked at as, oh, he's just a throw-in, you know. Yep. Oh, the Pistons wanted to trade me. And now I think he's got something to prove too. He's also a restricted free agent this summer. So lot to, lot to prove from him as well. Um, and so I think that, that all that, having guys that are hungry coming in, I think is going to be exciting and, and a little bit of a change of pace for this Mavs team that every once in a while needs guys, new guys to come in. And you saw what just happened. They just made the finals with that. This is not a team that cares about continuity. It, it does not seem like. <laughs> it's just, for the most part, they're intact. Yeah, I know. But it is just a lot of turnover and a lot of, all right, this might be our team. We bring Derek Jones Jr. back. <laughs> we'll see what they do. No, yeah, we have right, no. two new huge rotation players, maybe even three, because Quentin Grimes could definitely reach that. I mean, Quentin Grimes at his best hypothetical form could, could, could start at his best. Yeah. Like that's like peak hypothetical form. Obviously you're just kind of 
wishing on a prayer there at that point. Clay would have to be bad, though, for that to happen. I think there's a world where, like, you know what? We need the defense. Clay coming off the bench makes sense. I think he can close for sure. So, uh, I don't know. You could see the roster form into shape. It, It doesn't take a lot of crazy things to happen. Nope. Coming up, let's talk about what other crazy things can happen. We'll talk about Derek Jones leaving, but then we'll also... The last roster spot is still open. The oh. slightly want Dennis Jr. or Spencer Dinwiddie. We'll talk about that and more coming up. If you don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Go check out BetterHelp if you need someone to talk to because everyone's got things that they're anxious about, things that they need to work through, things that need uh, that just start running through your mind all the time. You're like, I just can't get an answer to this. I just can't figure out why I can't answer this for myself. You need to go to BetterHelp. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. If you're entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. I've used it before. I like that I could pick different times. I didn't have to just do, all right, 1 p.m. every Thursday. I could do different times each week and all that. Fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists for no additional charge. You can go check that out. BetterHelp.com slash LockdownNBA. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockdownNBA today to get 20% or 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockdownNBA. Shut it down! Let's go home! All right, Slightly, he's back. He's back from his European adventure. Had a great time. For some reason, I feel like you filmed like some, one of those like not another teen movie things over there. I tried to do a vlog, <laughs> and then I just three days into it, I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I just stopped. So I have some some clips, but tried to work on my vacation, decided not to. Yeah, that was it. But then by the end of it, I I am just a workaholic. I was ready. To, we're ready to watch Quentin Grimes film. That's it. We're gonna lock in, and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna do that. <laughs> yep. Now now that it's that. Uh, okay, let's let's talk about Derek Jones leaving. Derek Jones Jr. Mm. What does that mean now that now that he's off the team? How does that how does that feel for you? And and what are the Mavs losing? Sad. I hope something doesn't Sad. come out in the coming weeks where it's like Derek Jones Jr. felt slided or something yeah. by the Mavs because that would make me feel bad because they did publicly say he was option one A and one B, uh, and that could have been true, and they, that could have been their hey, this is what we want to offer you. And then he's like, no, I'd rather go to the Clippers, which, okay, that's interesting. He's probably going to have a bigger role there. He, yeah. I don't think that's good for him. But he, he no, got, he got paid already. Not, but hey. But uh, anyways, it sucks. I mean, he was so important and good for this team. Uh, obviously, by the end of it, in the finals, he was a guy who couldn't really be on the court. But that was just the Celtics were so good and the Mavs just needed anything offensively. So he was the guy who got left out. But uh, defensively, he was a big reason why they were as good defensively as they were Correct. in the back half of the season. Uh, him picking up the Shea Gilders Alexanders of the world, the Anthony Edwards of the world is a reason why the Mavs went to the NBA finals this the year. Harden, yeah. And his offensive leap and just the confidence he had playing alongside Luca and Kyrie was awesome to watch. And, you know, good for him getting paid. He was a guy who got a, a minimum contract last off season, uh, with one foot in the, when you're a minimum guy at 26, you know, a bad season and you're out of the league. Like yeah. you're playing overseas, trying to get back into the NBA. And now he's a guy with some contracts, uh, I just forgot the word (laughs) security. It's not the (laughs) word I was going for, but okay, that works. Uh, You know, I was different languages overseas. (laughs) (laughs) London, London, right? A lot of time. They basically don't talk English over there, uh, or at least American English. But anyways, uh, yeah, it's going to suck without him, but I think they can, I don't think he's some like super irreplaceable guy. That's the, that's the thing is that you can't, you can, you can be sad about losing him, but don't think that he's such yes. an irreplaceable figure that you're like, Oh my gosh, there's no way that Najee or Quinn Grimes can't be as good as him because we wouldn't have thought I didn't have Derek Jones Jr. Penciled in for minutes at the start of last season. You could argue Najee's better than Derek Jones Jr. He was, he played, had a bigger role on a, on the Pelicans last year than I don't know if I would say that, but you could argue it and it could happen. We're going to find out yeah. through the season. Uh, imagine though all the wide open threes that Derek Jones Jr. got, Clay Thompson now getting. Yeah, I mean, it it does make you ask. All right, you're playing the Oklahoma City Thunder. Who is guarding Shea Gildas Alexander? Who's picking him up? Yeah. Who's picking up Anthony Edwards? Who's guarding those guys? Because it's a lot to ask for Clay at this stage of his career. It's a lot to ask for PJ, and that's who I would have to assume it is. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. PJ can hold his own, kind of, but you don't have that elite point of attack defender. They'll just have to get creative. Uh, they'll figure it out. I mean. They'll figure it out. They have options. The last thing, the last roster spot, it's still open. Uh, AJ Lawson's spot is non-guaranteed. Mark- Markeith Morris has been on Twitter openly campaigning for Marcus Morris to join the team. Markeith Morris also thinks he's coming back because he said he, he said he's coming back on, on Twitter. I'm, I'm sure he is. So he could be the last roster spot or they could. Wait, he's know. not on the roster? No. Oh. 
He'll be back. I guarantee you. So, yeah, which, which we think. So, you get the options. Marcus Morris, Dinwiddie, Dennis with Jr. <laughs> those are my options. I mean, right now, those are the ones the Mavs have been connected to. Dwight Powell's still on the team? Dwight Powell's still on the team. Oh, why Ayata? Team Canada. <laughs> uh, I guess Dennis with Jr. out of those three. I mean, if I had to pick one. <laughs> that's what most Mavs fans want, too. That, that's over, overwhelmingly from polls that I've done and comment sections I've perused and all that. Uh, or why? why? Why Dennis? It just gives you a point of attack option, I would have to say. Now, Dinwiddie might make the most sense, actually, to be honest with you. Because you got Luka, Kyrie, and then who else is creating offense yeah. for you? Is it, and it's, it's Clay a little bit. It's Jaden Hardy a little bit. It's Najee Marshall a little bit. And then you're like, oh, what are we doing? Could be Dinwiddie. Uh, Marcus Morris, yeah, I'm, I'm, it would be kind of funny to have the twins back on the there's no, team. but I There's no hard feelings with Marcus Morris and stepping on Luka's ankle and all that? I don't think so. These are, these are our ultimate competitors. Ultimate. Ultimate competitors. You know how many times in a rec pickup game I've tweaked an ankle? But De- a lot, actually. Dennis or Dinwiddie, you're, you're fine with either, but Dennis is your pick. Yeah, I, honestly, out of those three, I don't really care. Doesn't move you at all. Uh, if any of the three move me, I'd say Dinwiddie moves me the most. Hmm. But he, he chooses mama, he comes back. Just because I could see a world where, oh, Dinwiddie's kind of found something a little bit again, and he's just comfortable here, and he's like become a really kind of important guard <laughs> off the bench. Dinwiddie shooting 45% from three. Yeah, again. I could see something <laughs> like that happening. Whereas Dennis Smith, the offense, I kind of struggle to see just from what, I feel like if you really can't provide offensively, kid's not going to play stuff. Yeah, so that would be kind of hard, especially for a smaller guard. Uh, you have to get you guys have to remember Kyrie six two six three, so that kind of changes the equations on some things. So you also start you start going through the roster, and it's it's hard to come up with minutes. Like you just start going through, and I went yeah. I went through, and I was like, all right, where do you find minutes for this fifteenth guy? Because I come down to all right, if Grimes is going to play eighteen minutes, which I think he can, I think he can play, I'm, I'm high on Grimes. Then all of a sudden you're like, all right, X, the XM Hardy spot is like 15 minutes. And then is Din, does Dinwiddie or Dennis just take XM and Hardy's minutes completely? Yeah. It's really hard if you go with a 10-man rotation. Wow, yeah. The, wow, that's some depth right there. Yeah, which you're feeling good about. They're, they're, this is a pretty good roster, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty good team. Uh, and, and we're not even con- possibly considering an OMAX Summer leap where it's like oh, I'm ready this guy that. might have I'm to play. That. I'll have a show tomorrow night after the game. Uh, but that that would be wishful thinking, I think. But I mean, he project. He's a first round pick. Yeah. He, you know, is uh, Jared Dudley said that one of his things is he's going to prepare Omax to potentially take a rotation spot. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm yeah, down, I'm down for great. that. And uh, and he <laughs> provides a lot of size and point of attack defense. Size and point of attack defense they could use. Dudley could talk me talk <laughs> the fan base into me. <laughs> Like, look, we know he's slow, and we know that he's had some lower body injuries, but we think we could get him there. He just mentioned an ankle injury on stream. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's some instances where the shot looks like we could maybe get it to 25 percent from three. <laughs> and if we can, we can live with that. Now the three point line is longer in the NBA. Than I just in the corner. That'd be it. There you go. Go check out the slightly biased stream. We did one where I revealed all the off season to him, which is hilarious. So go check out that stream that on slightly biased YouTube channel. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom. Demon home.